There we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Sunday Facebook Live this week with Kamal. Welcome, Kamal. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jochen. and I'm so happy to be here. And hello to everybody out there. Uh, it's wonderful to be together. Thank you. Well, we're so excited to have you with us here as uh, and friends. Um, if you can see and hear me, um, please let us know, uh, give us a thumbs up, send us a little heart, and also let us know where you're calling in from. At the moment, it seems we're live. I just want to be sure that everything is working well here. Okay, I think we might be, yes, perfect. Okay, great. Might have a little delay here. So friends, as I shared with those of you who are in the bright group, um, I was like really excited to have Kumal with us today because Kumal's life and your background and everything you've experienced in life is just completely amazing. We could have a day long life and still not cover everything. So uh, it will be just super precious and, and informative to hear about your journey we could have picked so many titles and headlines because you have searched so long and you have been seeking like in so many areas and different directions thank you all so nice to hear from you all um and uh, and it's just amazing to hear you know to what lengths you have gone in life and um, how your journey was. So if we can even grab a few spotlights today, that will be wonderful. Again, thank you so much to be here and uh, take the time to be with us today. Thank you so much, Jochen. It's, uh, I've really been passionate about this all my life. So it's beautiful. Thank you for having me here. Your passion like jumps through the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kamal, for everybody who has never heard from you or seen you, um, I always like to start with, you know, when did you come across the Balanced You training and what kind of circumstance were you in at the time? Like, what was your life like? What were you looking for? What attracted you just so that we can build that as the platform for your journey? I have been. I've had a big dream since I was small, really, since uh, since I was small. I wanted another, I wanted to find another way. We all could live together. We all can flourish. We all can live in harmony. We all can thrive. And when I met the Balanced View training, so many, many, many years later, I met the Balanced View training 2012. At that mm -hmm. point, I was, uh, I still thought it is possible because it, it is our next step. It is our really our next evolutionary step that as a culture we have to take. I know it is possible, but I thought I won't see it anymore in my lifetime. I thought I have done, I have seen so much, I have done so much, I have looked so much around people have tried everything and I have not seen really this this dream lived so I thought hmm, it it'll happen maybe in the future sometime but not I'm not going to see it so I at that time I settled with my husband with cats and dogs I settled I'm in Italy it's a beautiful life here I settled here and I called it making peace with reality. I thought this is reality, actually a small reality or two. It, it felt small, much smaller than my dream had been. So in other words, you, you saw the potential for, for something like this to come about, but you didn't see it like enacted or you didn't see a platform where it would be lived. So you basically built your own little <laughs> world <laughs> where everything was okay. We're better to do that than in Italy. And like, the, I think just for me, one of the best countries ever to, to just build such a little bubble. Um, and, uh, and you arranged for that and you, you kind of made peace with that. So um, on, on your journey from you said you had this dream already as a child which is 
kind of amazing. And it, on another hand, I think many children actually see this and can't really understand why do people go to war? Why do people fight with each other? So I think there's a lot of just seeing how innocently children see the world. There's a lot that we can see there. Um, but you somehow preserve that within yourself, which is quite, you know, it's quite amazing that you didn't lose that faith and trust. You just didn't see it anywhere. Where were you looking for? Like, how did you try and create this? Or where did you look for something like that, for a solution to bring this about? What were some of the things you've encountered along the way? I remember still when I was very small, how tight it felt that I felt so squeezed into this this having to be a certain way sense of identity you are like this you have to be like this it just felt so tight and at that point my solution was actually I tried in that sense I tried religion was the church as a kid I would go in church before school and get this great relief there is something vaster than I am. There is something that holds everything together. And I had beautiful conversations with God. <laughs> and this at the time was the sense there is something, it, it's just too tight. All this, what it's hard to get, to, to learn. We are this individual which has to be a certain way. It's, it's really hard work. So that was my very first solution. Then later on, I get growing up, I got critical with this church. I got very critical with all the institutions. I thought it's society's fault. And it was also our generation at the time. We were very mm. passionate. We were really, we wanted to see a change in the 70s as students. So I studied sociology and uh, very passionate still. I want to create a new world. I wrote my thesis, 250 pages. How can we create a new society, a new world where everybody can thrive? And I came actually to the conclusion then I have to start with myself. So that I was then mm -hmm. another part of the dream came. Then I was going for my own. No, I want freedom, complete freedom. I didn't see that what I was looking for in all the in the people around, in the other students, we were not the new world. So we had, it was so clear, we have to start with ourselves. And mm -hmm. then the other part of my dream, then I was going for my, you know, for my enlightenment, for my realization and spent the next 20 years. <laughs> At the time then I left everything, I and went to first to South America in search. In search, I was in search of a teacher, in search of, to learn how can I be this. And then I came to India. I spent uh, 20 years in the uh, Osho community in India, in America, and did what I can, what I could, until I came then. <laughs> Fast forward. <laughs> to this time in India, it, it, to this time in Italy, where I felt I have done what I can. There is nothing else mm. I can do. Also, in terms for my own realization, I have done what I can. And this enlightenment now, if it wants to come, it's a stroke of grace, I felt, or a stroke of luck, which happens to one in a million. So there's nothing I can. I have meditated, I have practiced all kinds of things. I've spent a fortune of every on, on courses on everything. So what can I do? In that that was the point when I met the balance view train. Oh wow. That's that's uh, <laughs> yeah, that as I said, I mean I, I didn't know some of those details uh, that you've just shared. Thank you. It's I can just feel the dedication that you have had for this like that lifelong dedication that is just so precious and so beautiful and i think many of us here can really relate to that on some level but not many people really take it to those lengths that you have gone uh so that's that's quite amazing and so when you said before in like 
in the beginning of of our conversation that you've kind of made peace with this i think that's like roughly the words you've chosen you not only meant the finding a like a a bigger space for this to come about but also in terms of your own realization like you've you've prepared the ground with all the practices but you just didn't know what else to do in order to then like get so to speak enlightened or whatever the word is okay. that that people would follow did you feel that there was like did you feel that there was anything missing like or what was your idea of enlightenment that you you know after like 40 years of practice where you felt there is still something missing can you share what that was or how that felt or was it just like a a sense that you can't even pinpoint or what what was that that made you feel i still don't have it what was that it that you were looking for i was feeling i was feeling small also looking around in the world and it's so easy i think it's so easy to feel small you look you put on the tv you see all the craziness what can you do mm. no it's it's very easy to feel powerless and so i thought this powerlessness this smallness is reality i i it, it it seemed so real to me so it it felt it at the time i thought you know, i was so convincing myself this is what it is but something inside was still it felt tight so mm -hmm. it's it's still i knew i knew there was more I knew, and I all these limitations which I had, which then later on I saw. You no, know, they are not real. We are just we are not small. We are not limited. We are vast. <laughs> so there was something in me that knew this is not this is not the end. This is not the end. No, but I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to go any mm -hmm. further at the time. That is so beautiful. So even though you had that like resignation or or you kind of intellectually you you didn't know what else to do, but in your heart that faith that just never really left. You just kept that like that kid. I was so touched hearing how as a as a child you would go to church every morning. And like with that faith and reverence and trust and you know, just opening up to at the time what you called God. <clears throat> and um so that somehow that seed that core in you that you always kept that alive or it kept you alive or whatever it, it was always present somehow despite all these experiences and and not not having it work out so how did you then stumble across the balanced view training how did that happen and so during this time also, I was always open. I was always interested. I was always on the internet looking what was going on out there and with teachers, with te but never found anything that could attract me in any way. But the curiosity always remained. And uh, then a friend of us told us about the training and I looked and mm, there it was. And it was so obvious, so clear. So you saw a video? Did he send you a video of, of Candace or, or how did that? I saw a book? video and and I saw several videos. Then I didn't stop seeing videos. I, I just <laughs> <laughs> watched it all. And actually, during that time in 2012, when I saw the first uh, video, I was enrolled in a, in a master in the, the University of Florence of neuroscience and meditation. Because I thought maybe you hear so much meditation and science, how they meet. So I thought maybe there is something interesting. Maybe they can help me some further with something. So I did this and we compared many um, practices, how they work, what they actually do. And when I saw the first videos of train of, of uh, the first videos of Balance View and uh, and when I listened to Candice and I saw how the 
training was constructed, I saw the algorithm of the training, I saw how how it's made to produce result that it meets the highest scientific standards. I was so, wow, this is it. <laughs> it's so obvious. This, this, is, this is it. This produces results. And then I heard Candice say, it's guaranteed. We give a guarantee. If you follow the instruction, it's guaranteed. And uh, this, this kind of and blew my mind at the time. And to see how much Candice has put into it, you know, 40 years of research, and it is constructed so incredible that it has to produce results. At the time, this was intellectual for me in some way, you know, because I still had to, had to see for myself. I still had to you know, see the results in myself, but I saw how how it was made. So I thought this, I want to try. I want to give it a try. I want to jump in completely. And that's what I did. I want to see for myself. Well, now you have me listening <laughs> even more. So what what did you do and 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 what did you see? <laughs> I did the introduction, the, the, the introduction training, the introduction to open intelligence. And I saw that you know, here in the introduction, what from always was a goal for me, what was always in the future, maybe it will come, maybe one day I will get there. In the introduction, it was there. So I can mm. live it here. I can live it now. Wow, and every morning and uh, every moment, and I can train up in it. You know, I train every short moment that I take. I'm training up in being it right now. I'm not training up in searching or in doing something for the future. I'm training up in the result every time I'm taking a short moment. So this, this wow, I can actually be it, see it right now, every moment. And uh, mm. that was amazing. Well, that was already. Uh, sorry, I think we have a little, we have a little delay there. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. but, um, I think especially from what you shared before about feeling powerless and waiting for that stroke of grace, it sounds like this was a massive difference because now you saw the result was already present within you and you learned how to access that like every time you wanted to basically so that feels like a massive like shift in in experience from where that faith that you had basically became a lived reality it wasn't faith in something out there or or something that you couldn't quite grasp but that you could specifically identify in yourself that's like that feels completely awesome uh so you 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 fell in love with with the practice and and uh how how did you <clears throat> how did you nurture that practice for yourself like how did you how did you make that more and more like easy or accessible or practical for yourself first of all like you said it was like taking my power back or refinding my power that it's really up to me you know that really it's not something that happens to me maybe i can make a choice every moment so this is so empowering and then i was joining clarity calls and the empowerment there that I was asked from the beginning, I was asked in, in, in my very first clarity call, I was asked to share. And I was shocked. I was not used to, we are we were so used to listen to someone who is so not reachable somewhere, you know, so far away. And here we have a voice. I had a voice from the very beginning. I was asked to share my experience, the experience counts and to see in my own experience. And this is so, so power, uh, empowering. So then it came 
always more and more and more alive in my own experience. Then uh, an, another thing which struck me when I met the training was I saw the logo for the benefit of all. And this, this, this was my old dream again, because we want to do it together. Well, it's, for, it's for all, and, and we think of the benefit of all. Automatically, we are in line, aligned to the highest level of intelligence. No, we have the widest view, because we think of everybody. So I thought, wow, this, for the benefit of all, this, this, this is my, <laughs> this is where I want to be and at the same time i was skeptical at the time no i said let's see if the people if the community if they walk their talk <laughs> let's see if it's so i was skeptical because i had seen so many things no where then all kinds of things the intentions are so good but then all kinds of things can interfere with good intentions so it needed to have a more solid base so i i said i keep my eyes open but i'm open i go and and i want to i want to see well and and what did you find <laughs> <laughs> tell tell us everything so i, so I went you, I, yeah go, I went, go ahead i went very <laughs> I went very fast. I went to uh, Sweden. I went to uh, to meet the community. I wanted to meet the community because I I really wanted to see, and and it was so powerful to see it lived in others, you know, and to see at the time things lived in others which I did not realize in myself then. So I needed to see it lived i needed to see it in others so then then it has helped me so uh, so to see it for myself and uh, just to see people who live as their true, true nature who relate as open intelligence who relate as as their true nature you know, as their true identity is so relaxing is so empowering it is so joyful <laughs> so i was i i know i was in awe from the first moment because here what i'd been looking for was lived i saw it I saw it realized already. I, I saw it lived. So I was home. Oh, I need tissues. <laughs> Thank you, Kamal. That's so beautiful. That is just yeah, wow, what a what a blessing to come across. Yeah, to just come across this whatever you've watched, the first video or whatever it was that your friend sent you along and to you know, never have given up hope and really being willing to check it out. And I love what you said. You wanted to see in your own experience. You didn't want to just blindly believe or have or just rely on your faith. You wanted to see, and I, I could hear you're a scientist, you know, you did your masters and you compared different practices. And uh, so you really wanted to see the actual result. You wanted to see it in other people and you wanted to see it for yourself. So we could go in many directions from here. One area that I would love to hear is just for you in your own experience, and then maybe we can also go back to the to the benefit of all again, but just in your in your own day-to-day -day experience of living your life, um, you know, after you came back from the center in Sweden, for example, and then you're back in Italy. How did this like practice and and the the moment to moment lift experience of what you had been waiting for or what you had been seeking to discover that moment by moment how did that impact your relationship with yourself your relationship with other people any other like impact that you noticed through that introduction and through that 
power of becoming more and more familiar with it? It had a big impact that there, like you say, I could go in so many directions. There are many, many, many impacts. There's one impact also, also from the community. What, what I saw there is not only how beautiful the relating is, also how efficient it is. Not to see in the center 150 people work together, run the center without any conflicts in an incredible efficient way. So this was one impact that it had on our life because we also have a company, we have employees to see that you know, with all the leadership courses, all the management courses we've done, this is the best, best, best mm -hmm. ultimate management tool. So <laughs> absolutely, that is that is one one point. Other points um, for like th then then I did the empowerments, and the empowerments opened so much. Through the empowerments, I felt I'm getting more intelligent by the week which I did not expect because actually before I thought I, I knew it all. No, I thought I know open intelligence, I know I've read hundreds of books, I've practiced. So, and then to see how the view opens, the view opens the, always more, how relationships change. And now I'm coming back to your question, how it changed here. I could see how I had kept myself in this small comfort zone before, how I had avoided situations that were uncomfortable, just saying, why should I do it? This is, I am good at this, so I do, I keep my safe, small world. And then suddenly to be free to see that life is so much better uh, bigger relationships get so much easier with everybody. I, I can be together with everybody. It's, it's, uh, life is so much lighter and uh, so many ideas that I had are just... Uh, and f fearlessness is one point. No? Before, before thinking like in life, you never you never know what shows up. No, you absolutely never know what shows up. So we had situations happen, like very difficult situations with the business, very threatening situations. So fear shows up. And then you I was thinking, how come no this fear should not be there after all these years? <laughs> and making something out of it. And this is such a big difference that I learned then with the training that everything can come. I can, everything is welcome. And there is freedom. That there is always, always freedom mm -hmm. in the, what we call in the immediate perception of, of I am always free. So this is a big difference that I can live a, now my life is spontaneous, is fearless, is, is uh, even though the outside, the going to work, the doing things, everything looks the same. And still, you know, it is, it is very different. Um. Yeah, that's so striking. Everything you've just said, like that you're always free. That is, I mean, what a difference to feeling limited by the world, by society, like you said in the beginning, where you felt powerless in the face of it. And and now to see that you're always free. And uh, yeah, and, and then how did that change, for example, in your company or in other relationships as well, when you're when you have that recognition that you're free and that you're fearless, do you see a, a change in how you relate, how you interact, how you share, like 
of yourself, you could say, with other people, how you contribute to circumstances, how you are in the world? Like there's nothing anymore to not to protect or to hold in place or just meeting people completely open heartedly. Mm. Just just uh, <laughs> knowing who people are, knowing their identity, knowing my identity. So I don't have to, I'm not relating to people's no, what we call data to people's no, maybe responses, reactions. I'm relating to people as who they are. So, so just, powerful. Uh, How do the people respond to that? They love it. <laughs> <laughs> usually, no, usually when the the way the way we are with people is also what is coming back. You know? So relationships do get so much easier. Relationships get really, really easy, fun. Beautiful. And so, in a way, you're, when I'm just listening to you, you're, you've continued now that you have these tools, you're continuing to expand this world that you saw in the beginning. You know, you had to start very small with just you in Italy <laughs> in a nice circumstance and then now you're expanding this peaceful world and or this world of harmony of peace of complete freedom and it's basically <clears throat> wherever you go that's where you where you create this world just by the way that you show up by the way of how you see everyone and everything it's beautiful also how you shared that you recognize what you realize in yourself. You recognize that in everybody, in everybody you meet, that's all also naturally present. That is like super powerful. And like this, we no, we are not powerless anymore. We actually create benefit everywhere, anywhere where we go, and still no. Also meeting with the community, being together, keeping up. You know, training up is so powerful because still we you know, through the other it, it's in the end it's it's lift between us you no know, it's nothing that it's nothing also that we can do at least for me i could have never done it alone you no know, it's it's something that lives in our in our togetherness and it is so incredible to share this and to come together and to be immersed this is what i wish for everybody you know, to come and be immersed in this atmosphere and we just you know we we absorb it and we feel the great relief and we feel wow here i can relax this is my true nature and and to have this more and more available and it's also something we love to create here in italy we are looking into having also a center here where people can just come and ah and feel this atmosphere and get to know themselves and get the trust you not know, to develop this trust to feel you are in an environment where you can trust just so completely. This this is so, so powerful. Oh, that is so <laughs> precious. Yeah, wow. And the scent in Italy is precious too. <laughs> that, that sounds um, very yummy and amazing. Um, there was something that, that you just mentioned that, that really, again, struck me so much because you you said you absorb the the energy the atmosphere but at the same time like these 150 people in sweden at the center that you mentioned everybody not only absorbs it everybody also like gives back is it together so it isn't like that there is a power hub somewhere and then we all need to be close to that power hub we're we're just doing all of this all of this together really so that is also very powerful to hear in everything you're sharing. You're, you're taking 
everything in, but at the same time, you're giving everything and more out. And in that way, really, this can grow so far beyond an individual like realization or, or, or recognition that is so beautiful to, to bring that into, into what you're doing. Wow, this is yes. just completely amazing. Um, I see we're getting towards the end of our time. Let me just quickly see here if there is any more questions. Everybody here whose share I read is just completely grateful and blown away by everything you shared. I don't think we had a question here. Um, friends, if anybody watching here today has any question, I think we definitely need a part two of this conversation. Um, uh, but if anybody here has any questions, please let us know in the Facebook group. And if you feel that what you heard today about Kamal's incredible story sounds like you or any aspects that you recognize from your own journey where you can recognize, wow, I, I feel like Kamal felt 10 years ago or at some point in the, in the beginning of her journey, and you'd like to speak with somebody who has seen it all, then we're offering free breakthrough calls. They're about uh, 45 minutes to an hour. And we're getting together on that call really to look at your life, at your practice, and to see where it's currently challenging for you to bring what you want to achieve into your life right now, whatever that might be, because that's different for every person. And then we'll look at it step by step on like developing a plan on how you can come closer to your goal. So that just like what you heard from Kamal today, it, it comes from a dream to an actual lived reality, because that's really where not only we as individuals thrive, but as we heard so beautifully from Kamal today, um, it also it really is the basis for the solutions that the planet needs, that the world needs, that every society around the world needs today so we're not only doing this each one for our own relief and benefit but really it is for the benefit of all so if you have um if you would like to get us uh, with us in this way uh, eric or someone in our team already posted the link there it's bright.lc forward slash call just book a call there they're free we're only asking to come with an open heart and mind so that we can really look at your life together. Um, and then we'll see uh, what your best next steps would be in life. Okay, so in the meantime, we can't wait to hear from you and meet with you. Kamal, thank you again so much. That was just completely heart touching and mind opening and just so, so precious to see you. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Johan, and thank you, everybody, for being here today and listening. Bye, friends.